Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Listen, I want to get right into this word. Now, 2 Samuel chapter 7, 12 through 16 is when David was planning on building a house for, um, he was planning on building a house for, for, um, for the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant. And the Lord told David, no, you're not going to build a house for me. I would like your son, one of your sons will do it. He will come from you and, and he will build my house for me. And I'm going to do great things in his life. And your kingdom, your, your name will go on forever. I will establish your, your name and I will establish your kingdom forever. And I will work through your son to do these great things in my name. And so here, I will encourage you to read it, 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 16, that God is telling David about the future, about how his kingdom and his name is going to be established and how he's going to use his son to use Solomon. He doesn't say Solomon, but he says, your son, he will build my house and he will do these great things. Now, before all this, the Lord is giving him this word. David had not yet met Bathsheba and David had not yet committed adultery. And some of the things that he speaks about, that God speaks about, even in this case, in the scripture, he's talking about how he will chastise Solomon because Solomon will be a son unto him. And he will chastise Solomon, you know, when he, when he does wrong in his iniquity and things of that nature. But he says, I won't take the kingdom from him like I did to Saul. But when he messes up, I will chastise him. And you knew, and if you know anything about Solomon, you'll find later on, as Solomon has all these different women in his life, he begins to fall away from the things of God. He begins to go after the gods of the other women and fall away from the one true God who he's always served and who his father served. But here what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, is even here in 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 16, God is already speaking about a promise. He's already telling David that your kingdom will be established. He's saying that your son is going to establish the throne and he's going to build me this house. And when he, when he messes up, when he does any iniquity, I will chastise him. I will raise him up, but I'm not going to take the throne away from him. What I'm trying to tell you is this. God's word will not return to him null and void. When you want to abort the promise because of your mistakes... God's word will not return to him null and void. Even when you want to abort the promise because of your mistakes. David had not yet made a mistake. He had not yet fallen into adultery. Solomon had not yet been born, much less to walk into the steps of iniquity that he would later do. But yet here's this word that the Lord has put out there and said, this will be so. I hear the Lord saying there's some of you that he has told you some things that you will be, but because of the things that you have done and the errors that you have made, you feel like maybe you never heard that word and maybe that word does not apply to you. But God is saying when he gave you that word, when he told you that thing, he already knew what you were going to do. So what the Lord wants you to do is to get up out of this funk of disobedience. Get up out of this funk of feeling depressed, feeling that you're not worthy. And you need to get in his presence. Ask for forgiveness, my brothers and sisters. Whatever you have done and get in his presence so that you can continue on and fulfill the promise. You see, David didn't do anything yet, but yet the Lord is speaking to him about his kingdom being established. He's still blessing David. And he's also speaking, <clears throat> excuse me, of the seed that's going to come out of from Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. And he's also talking about the sins that Solomon will fall into in the future, that he is going to still use him. Now, my brothers and sisters, don't get it mixed up to think, oh, well, God's going to use me no matter what I do, because David pay, paid very dearly for his sins. When he killed Uriah, who was Bathsheba's husband, and took Bathsheba into his house and made her his wife, he paid dearly because the sword did rise up out of his house as the Lord prophesied to him through Nathan to say the, the sword will rise up in your house. 
and what you've done in secret, it will be exposed publicly. And Absalom rose up and went against his father. And David had to run him and his, his household had to go and be in the wilderness. And he was fleeing from Absalom. And Absalom did a lot of things against his father and pursued him to try to kill him. And David also went through some other things, you know, later on where he's experienced a lot of scorn, a lot of ridicule, a lot of hardships because of his sin. So don't take sin. Don't take this to say, oh, well, the Lord's going to use me no matter what. Because your sins and your disobedience is still going to cost you. Even if in some cases, even when you still ask for forgiveness, there's some consequences to your actions that will, will, will change a lot of things and make your walk and even the vision and the things that God gave you for the future can make it very difficult because now you've done this thing. For example, God can have one plan for your life, but you go out there and get a, a man's wife pregnant. Okay. Now you're dealing with a man who's angry with you. Him and his wife decide to stay together. Now you got to deal with going to get the baby, dealing with your wife, how she feels about it, all of that. The clashes between the two women at times, trying to get the son or the daughter, the father, the, her husband hates you. There's all this drama going on. It could be a, a bunch of woo, woo, woo and just craziness and you're dealing with it and then the courts and you were never meant to go through that. You're trying to get your household together. Your kids are angry with you for making their mother cry. And you had this other child and I thought we were your only kids. And, and now they don't like the daughter, the son. There are so many possibilities because of what you chose to do. So don't think think, and take this word as being, oh, well, no matter what I do, God's going to make me, God's still going to work through me. No. <laughs> and I hear God saying even these last days, you can abort. See these times of David and where we are now, God is not going to allow you. God's not going to give you certain things if you just want to willfully, 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 willfully keep on living in sin. The thing with David, there's so many people that will fall back on the David and Bathsheba story and say, well, but what you don't see is that David did not keep sinning before the Lord all the time. And then you didn't see the grave consequences of his actions that continue from generation to generation and how it drew things to him. But what I hear the Lord saying, because I don't want to get too far off the topic, is that there are many of you that you feel shame because of things that you have done. You feel that God cannot use me now. The words that you may have gotten or received early on in your life, the, the words that you may have received two years ago, the word that the Lord spoke to you earlier this year, then you find yourself now, you, you did some things, okay? Whether you did something sexually, you did something that was wrong, you did something where something comes up and you go into jail, whatever it may be, you're feeling this word was not true. This is not what God said, and now here I am here doing this. But God knew about your errors before that. So do not abort the promises of the Lord because you can indeed abort it if you remain in disobedience. You see, when David messed up and he, he sinned before the Lord, he repented. He repented and he still had to deal with the consequences because Bathsheba lost that baby. And he still had to deal with the consequences, but he rose up and he anointed himself and he continued in the things of God. And there was his servants around him saying, well, how is it that the baby died and all this before the child died? You weren't eating. Now the child died. You're eating. It doesn't make any sense. And David said, well, I thought I would have some hope if I at least fasted. Maybe the Lord would change his mind and allow my child to live. But if he is not, what can I do? I must get up and continue. I'm paraphrasing here. So that's the thing. Sometimes people want to keep you there based on what you did. They want you to stay in this place of mourning and sadness, especially if they know what you did. But God is saying that you need to rise up, rise up because his word is still yea and amen. You're still expected to do the things of God. God does not want you to live in willful sin. God does not want you to live in willful disobedience because it will cost you. It will cost you. It can put a stain on the promise that God has for you. It will come, but your disobedience can change some things around and bring some complexities that you were never meant to experience. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. It's time to wake up and stop letting the devil 
lull you to sleep, rock you to sleep. Stop letting him do it. Stop letting him do it. Get up. Rise up. The word of the Lord is to rise up out of the ashes. Rise up out of the darkness. Remember the words that he has spoken to you. Get into his presence. Continue on this walk. Get into his word. Do the things that he's commanded you to do because there is a work to be done and there is not a lot of time. This is the word of the Lord today. Be blessed.